Be it known that as it has been seven months to the day since the disappearance of King Urzan Rogarvia and his heirs and kin, and furthermore that no true bearer of the blood and rights of Corral the Conqueror has been found in all the land, for the good of the nation of Bravoy and its people it is so declared that Lord Noleski Sertova, right wise regent of the Dragon Scale Throne, by virtue of descent from the line of Nico Sertova and Mirno Rogarvia, daughter of Corral the Conqueror, shall henceforth be honored as King of all Bravoy, in the name of Corral, Lord of Issia and Prince of Rostlin, suzerain of New Stetvin, overlord of Restov, and defender of the Lake of Mists and Vales. His heirs shall follow him in the rights to these titles unto the ages. So witness and sealed on this the twenty-first day of Kuthona in the year 4,699, Absalom Reckoning. It is a time of political uncertainty in Bravoy. Currently ruled by King Naleski Sertova and his sister Natala Sertova, the ruling house holds only a tenuous grasp on the kingdom. In the months following the vanishing of House Rogarvia, House Sertova assumed rule of the kingdom, claiming the deal between Corral the Conqueror and their house tied them the closest to the throne. It was a claim that had only ever been tested in theory under House Rogarvia's iron fist. However, with every true-blooded member of the house gone, the claim was put into practice. But the certainty of this rule has been waning each month, and now the regency seems ready to fall. With no heir, Naleski Sertova is beset on all sides by rivals to the throne and seekers of independence. The sword lords and other Rostlanders would be happy to be rid of the Issian king, while the heads of each great house would happily sit the dragon scale throne themselves. In a kingdom with long, harsh winters and unstable neighbors, many would rather have any ruler at all than none, if only to keep would-be attackers at bay. But as the player's campaign starts, it is still many months before winter, and all the powers will be seeking to secure or advance their own political agendas in the coming months. Sitting at the tipping point is the head of House Orlovsky, Lord Paul Orlovsky. While other houses have uneasily recognized Noleski Sertova as Bravois king, Paul Orlovsky has made no official statement other than to recognize him as Lord Regent. But time is running short and Orlovsky will either have to support the new king or lead an open rebellion against him. A new barony, like the one the party will be charged with founding, could benefit Orlovsky by giving him the extra resources he needs to wage war against those who would remain loyal to the king that he considers a usurper. If he chooses to openly support the king, the new settlements could be a way for him to bide his time and gather resources to begin his rebellion at a later time. However, any of the great houses could benefit from the control of these new lands. With many untapped natural resources, an allied or controlled barony in the Greenbelt could secure Sertova's regency or tip the balance in favor of one of his other rivals. The ample supply of wood and farmable lands would make the land attractive to citizens looking to join in the creation of new towns and settlements. The politically unstable Kingdom of Galt is constantly losing citizens who tire of the endless witch hunts and purges. Escaped slaves from kingdoms such as Cheliax could also make use of new settlements as a way to start a new life. The presence of many bandits and monsters in the land would make attractive work for mercenaries and guards as well. This atmosphere of impending betrayal and imminent conflict is the world the players find themselves stepping into, whether they choose to acknowledge it or not. Funded by the Sword Lords, the Greenbelt expeditions would no doubt benefit the Rostlanders in this political climate, eventually providing them with the resources they would need to make a new bid at freedom. If the new barony is a success, the players will themselves be beset on all sides by those looking to make alliances or simply wrest control of the land. Beyond all the other powers at play in Bravoy, there are many other political entities nearby that would be interested in a new land filled with resources. Any of the other river kingdoms would happily have an ally nearby to help advance their own political agendas. Other countries like Cheliax and Rasmoran would also enjoy gaining footholds in a young barony to influence how it grows, expecting to be repaid much later. Regardless of who they choose to side with, the party will see an increased amount of pressure as time goes on. They should be prepared to handle the delicate political situation as it progresses, or suffer the consequences. Who they choose to support as King of Bravoy and other political choices and gaffes that they make will shape the course of the late campaign as events unfold.